Okay, so let's look at Galois fields and understand how they are used in cryptography. So what we basically have is that we might have a vector. So let's say we've got four, three, four, six as a vector. It is possible to represent that vector as a, as a polynomial. So we might define this as three plus four X plus six X squared. And it's these polynomials that we perform our operations and it allows us to simplify our cryptographic operations. So we represent our binary values or we can represent our binary values as a polynomial. So for example, if we have say 0, 1, 2 and 3, then we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. This has a degree of 2. And we would define that as a Galois field of 2 to the power of 2. For this, we always have 0. And this we can represent as x. And this we can, rep this we can represent as 1 this we can represent as x, and this will be x plus 1. If we have a Galois field of 3, then we could go all the way up from zeros, all zeros to all ones. This will be a Galois field of 2 to the power of 3, or we'll have a degree of 3. This will go from 0, then 1, x, right up, to x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, so in this way, we can represent our binary values in terms of a polynomial value. And then we can operate on these. In this case, we either have a 0 or a 1 for our, represent, for our coefficients of the polynomial powers. So if we define that we have value such as this. Then our values of, of A's, the A coefficients there, will either be a zero value or a one value represented by the bit position that we have. So the operations that we perform are performed as a multiplication and also as a, a binary add. With a binary adder, we will take 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and we get 0, 1, 1, 0. When we do a multiply, And we have 0, 0, 0, or 1. So this is like an, 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 an add, and this is like an, an and, or a multiply operation. Okay, so let's look at how we then operate on our polynomial values. So let's take a simple one. And we'll take x squared plus x plus 1. So in this case, this will be the value of 1, 1, 1. And we're going to add it to x plus 1, which is the value of 0, 1, 1 in binary. So the result will be x squared plus x plus 1 plus x plus 1. So we only take into account our polynomial values together when we're doing the operation. So this will be x plus x plus x. x plus 1. 
plus 1 plus x plus 1. If we bring together the x values, then we have this. This will cancel and this will cancel, as we see, and we'll end up with x squared. So the Galois Galois field addition of these two values ends up being this value. And this value is obviously 1, 0, 0. Now let's do a multiplication. Okay, so we'll take the same value. It's x squared plus x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 1. So now we get x cubed plus x squared plus x squared plus x plus x plus 1. And here we see these and these will cancel because of this operation here. So the value becomes x cubed plus 1. So one thing that we can see here that we'll come back to is that we now have a, a power which is greater than the values that we started with. So we'll see what we can do with this later. But that's the operation that, that we have. And so this will be 1, 0, 0, 1. So the calculation of 1, 1, 1 times 0, 1, 1 will equal this value in binary. Now let's look at division. And the way that we do division is that we will take the inverse of a value and then multiply it. So if we wanted to take, say, uh, x squared plus x plus 1 divided by x plus 1, we find the inverse polynomial of this value and then we multiply it together. Once we have that, then we can we can compute just as we as we did there. Okay. So we could do the calculation, but we can actually find out that the inverse of this is actually x cubed plus x squared plus x. From here, what we can do is that we can then multiply this and this to be able to get the result. So I won't do the whole calculation here, but we'll end up with this value here. And I appreciate it looks a bit strange because we actually end up with a higher power than we have here. But I'll explain how we can reduce that power down later. If we want to do this in a long-handed way, then it's possible for us to do the division as we would do with long division. But let's keep our value there just now for that. The operation that we now use to be able to reduce these back into the, the finite fields or into the constrained fields that we have. 
So for example, a, ga a Gallius Galwa field of two to the power of eight gives us 256 different values. And we can't have any more than that from zero to 255. So we need to constrain our outputs to bring them back within the powers of the polynomials that we actually have. So with this, what we have is a primitive polynomial. And a primitive polynomial is a, rather like the mod p operation that we have within finite fields in that no value can divide or we can't factorize this uh, this prime number here so that it's possible to perform a mod operation and make sure that our calculations still work. So a primitive polynomial or a primitive cannot be factorized into other polynomials. And it allows our calculations to work where we can uh, divide by our primitive to be able to reduce back into our finite field. Okay, so let's say we're operating on a Gawa field of 2 to the power of 3 or 8. So a known primitive that we can use is x cubed plus x plus 1. So what we can do now is we can take or the values that we have and hopefully we'll be able to reduce the value down into this finite field. So let's now take this value. So we now have x to the power of 5 plus x to the power of 3 plus x and we're going to divide it by our primitive x cubed plus x plus 1. So let's do this long-handed. Well, obviously we can do it in this way by finding the inverse of this, but we'll just do it as we would do a log division. So that goes into that x squared times x to the 3 and we end up with x squared. So those will, will cancel when we add them together. Those will cancel and we end up with x squared plus x. Now that doesn't go into that. So this becomes our remainder. So the result of this operation will then be this value here. And we can see this is constrained within inside the finite field. Now we try this one. So in this case we had x cubed plus 1. And we're going to divide it by x cubed plus x plus 1. So that goes into that one time. So we end up that's 1 plus x plus 1. So that cancels. We end up with x. And that will be um, 1 plus 1, which is 0. So the value will be x here. So the result after we divide by the primitive will be x. The result of 
this operation here will be this. So you can see that the primitive value is the way that we can constrain the power of our polynomial so that we fit into the finite field.